Join me today for the ultimate Southern Thailand street food tour in Trang. On the menu is insanely good crispy pork, Trang's famous dim sum, sea grapes, and some Southern Thai curries. You don't want to miss this one. Let's do it. You cannot come to Trang without trying the roast pork. The town is, or the city, is famous for its roast pork. And I've come to a restaurant recommended by my guest house owner, so it should be good. It looks amazing. You can hear her chopping away in the background. The restaurant is called Banboa Bok Roast Pork. So the price, I think this says, 580 baht per kilo. I think. Don't read Thai, but I'm guessing that's what it says. So we're definitely not gonna need a kilo. Just wanna try it, maybe a couple of hundred grams. And you make this fresh every day? Yeah. How, how much do you make? Two pieces. Two pieces? Two pigs? Two pigs. Two pigs every day. And every day you sell out two pigs. Just look how crispy that skin is. And underneath, it looks sticky and juicy. Amazing. Cannot wait to try this. Just even filming the shots before trying it is just making my mouth water. You can just see how crispy and how thin that skin is and the juiciness of the meat. It's not super thick pork belly, but you still have the nice meat, the fat and the skin. You can see the three layers there. Let's, let's taste it. Oh, mom, can you hear the crunch of that skin? Now, you guys know I don't overly like sweet things in food, but there are rare occasions where it works. And the saltiness and the sweetness, the stickiness and gooiness, and the crunch of the skin with the fattiness, and then you get those sweet spices coming through because they've rubbed spices into it too. It's pretty damn good. And it is different because of that style, because of that sweetness, it is different to roast pork that I've tried in other areas. And when she was showing it and when I was looking, you could see the sticky sweetness underneath and you can see the crisp, salty skin on top. Oh man, it's up there with some of the best roast pork I've had. You can taste those Chinese spices. You can see the Chinese influence because this town has a huge Chinese influence. As you can tell by the dim sum, by this roast pork and by the architecture, you can see it. But here, and what I love about food is you can taste it. You can taste that history. Yeah, thumbs up for the roast pork. Okay, plate finished and 200 grams to go for a snack later. Definitely, definitely check this place out when you're in Trang. Kop Kung Kab. Kop Kung Kab. Trang is really a city of breakfast. There is no better way than to start the day with dim sum in Trang. And there is no better place than to come for dim sum than this restaurant, which is called Roan Thai Dim Sum. It is the most famous place for dim sum in Trang. And you can see that by just how busy it is. I'm looking forward to getting inside and trying some. Let's go. Got myself a table and I've come to the counter to have a look at what I should order. And it's gonna be an absolute challenge. There is so much choice. You've just got mountains and mountains of dim sum baskets. And the beauty, the beauty of dim sum is that it's also cheap. 20, 30 baht maybe per dim sum. So you can get a nice selection and not really break the bank. Just look at the selection and they are ready to be cooked. So you come over to the dim sum mountain, let's say. Choose what you want from the baskets. They'll tell you the price, of course. Then they'll cook them for you, they'll steam them for you because they are in these steam baskets. And I'll put them on the steamer and they can cook multiple at a time and the, the steam comes through and cooks them. But what, <laughs> what do I choose? Okay, that was a little hard and fast. Luckily, someone spoke a little bit of English, but it kind of stuck with what I know. I can't remember how many I've ordered, maybe five or six and then they take them away and they will steam them now. You have to come early to these places. It opens at 6 a.m. and it's closed by 11. Probably sold out before that. It's 7, 7.30 now and already it's busy and it's only going to get busier, especially on the weekends. I haven't gone too crazy 
because we have a lot of food to eat today. I've got some shumai, I've got pork, and I've got shrimp. I've got prawn hagao, which I love this one. And we have these, I don't know the name of it, but she told me it was shrimp wrapped in a little rice paper wrapper. Looks very nice. And then we have the custard bao. That's our dessert. Although I think we might be having the Chinese dumplings as well, since I saw her making them. But just look, <laughs> they're almost oozing and bursting with that custard. I don't know why they brought me this. Little salad, not sure we'll be eating. And of course, you've got your two sauces. You've got your black vinegar. Get some of that in there, which of course you need. And then you have your chili. So we'll load those up. Ready to eat, tell you what I think now, I'll give you my overview on whether I think this place is worth it or you should seek out another place in Thrang for dim sum. So we'll start with the shumai mu, the pork shumai. Nice, delicate egg wrapper on the outside. I'm gonna try it on its own first, actually. There's four of them. Actually, to be honest, I thought it wasn't gonna be so good because the wrapper looks a little, well, it doesn't look perfect, but actually, it's light, it's not claggy like I thought it was going to be, or a little bit dry, it's not. It's steamed nicely. The pork inside is salty and well seasoned. Dip it in the black vinegar, because it is a little salty, so it will take the black vinegar nicely. Oh yeah, acidity makes all of the difference. And you know what? That one actually reminds me of a British sausage. You know, herby, salty, porky. Very, very juicy inside. <laughs> Funny, I, I, I looked at it. Looks can be deceiving. I looked at it and thought, nah, that one's not. They all look good, but that one maybe not. So good. Let's try the shrimp shumai. And on top, got these little eggs, which is quite cool. This one is bigger though, so they've they packed it in. It'll give that a dip. Inside, it is prawn, of course, shrimp, but it's not ground up to a paste, it's chunky. So you get a nice texture and very, very nice, strong flavor of shrimp. Sorry, I'm using my hands, but... Okay. Hargao. One of my favorite. I'm gonna say, that, well, one of my favorite when I first tried it, I must say. And this one looks like the same type of prawn in the middle, the chunky. Dip it in that black vinegar. More delicate than the shumai. You can just taste a very delicate flavor of prawn. And that wrapper is like a window onto the prawn on the inside, translucent hargao wrapper. But on the bottom, oh wow. On the bottom you can see where that rice wrapper has just sucked up that sauce. So we'll give it a little dip in the black vinegar. That one's good. That one is very good, very delicate again. It is shrimp, but it's funny because the shumai shrimp has so much more flavor than in the hagao or in this one. Bao with custard. You can see how rich and yellow that is. And when I had it last time, I didn't like the pork bao, but the custard one I really like. So let's, it might go everywhere, but let's break it open. Ah, it's thicker this time. It's not like the explosion that we had. It actually looks like an egg yolk, but it is a custard. Sweet, light, fluffy bowel that just disintegrates in your mouth. And then a sweet, but not too sweet, egg custard, thick egg custard inside. Very tasty, actually. The quality of the bowel is great. I say this with so much knowledge, having it a few times before. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the quality of the bao is great. I preferred the one that had exploded because that was quite cool. And having the custard, the runny custard, but cannot complain at this one. I know I'm going to regret this, but apparently these patongo, or Chinese donuts, are pretty good here. So even after all of that and what's to come, we're going to have to order some. They've arrived at the table. My God, look at the size of them. I've seen these before and normally they're teeny tiny things, but these are jumbo. I don't know why I say that in an accent. It's a jumbo patongo. I was thinking of the next word. 
Chinese donuts. Oh man, they look good. And I think I've said this before in a previous video, but they come as a pair. And I think, I think, I don't know if it's true or not, but I heard that they're called lover's donuts because you can pull them apart. And you get one for one lover and one for the other lover. Nice story anyway. And it comes with pandan custard which we'll definitely be dipping them in. But it was so cool watching her make them, throwing the big piece of dough out onto the table, rolling it out and then cutting through. Then she puts a little bit of water onto one half and then folds it over to make the link and then throws them in the fryer. Love seeing stuff like that, as you guys know. I hope you love it too. But it's not just about the viewing, is it? It's about the eating. So let's dip that in that pandan custard. There you go. How good does that look? Mm. She's got the oil at a nice temperature, so they're not greasy. Sometimes they can be a bit greasy. It actually goes more like a donut. The small ones are just very crispy. Yes, soft on the inside and light, but because they're so small, they don't get doughy, and I mean that in a good way. But because these are big, you have the doughiness on the inside, as you'd expect from a proper donut. They're pretty good. So all of this food, the five dim sum, the pork, the Chinese dumplings, the Thai iced tea, 295 baht. Not bad. And yeah, two people could eat that, not just a greedy pig like me. Okay, I have come to a bakery, which is an institution in Trang, and they keep telling me the name of it. It's called Canon Piak Koi Gao. Soy Gao. Canon Piak Soy Gao. Yeah. For some, sometimes the words stick in my head, and sometimes they just go in one ear and out of the other. So, anyway, I'll put the name, <laughs> if I've said it wrong, I'll put the name in the description and the link in the description, but this place is an institution and you can tell by the size of the car park. It's just a bakery and the car park is huge. It's like 7-Elevens have smaller car parks than this place. There's literally minibuses bringing people here and taking them away. I think if you're passing by this area for Thai people, they stop off at this and they sell these little puffs filled with different fillings like taro or bean paste and then salted egg in the middle. They actually just let me try one and it is super, super tasty. And if you're wondering why I'm rushing around this morning, dim sum, this roast pork, it's because Trang seems to be a city that wakes up early and things open early, close early and sell out incredibly quickly. So my guest house owner told me I need to get myself moving and get around to these three places before they sell out. What's handy, as you'd expect of the place that's so popular, you have a decent menu and all sorts of things. Taro salted egg, red bean salted egg, potato salted egg, pumpkin, durian and salted egg. I'm not a big fan of durian, so who knows? Sesame, green tea, bean. You can get a mix, roast pork, curry puff, and then Thai cookie. Taro salted, I don't know if these are just like enticing me in, but I'm gonna be full. Kop kun kab. This is the taro, number one bestseller. You can see it's a, like a crunchy, puff pastry on the outside, dipped in sesame on the top, and inside you have taro, or plua, plua, torn, something like this. And then in the very middle, there is a salted egg yolk. Let's bite in and see. Mmm. You can see, right in the middle, we have that golden egg yolk. The sesame seeds add a nice taste, but it's sweet. Actually, the sesame seeds bring a really nice savouriness through but it is sweet. And again, it's sweet and salty. What, what's happening to me today? I'm liking sweet and salty. Soft, smooth taro on the inside. It's a bit like, I've not had it, it's a bit like the texture of mashed potato. Mm, yeah, really good. It reminds me a little bit. Have you ever seen the Chinese moon cakes? And I love this hospitality. Try before you buy. I mean, it's a good way because I'm definitely gonna buy some now. I was gonna buy some anyway for you guys, but yeah, try before you buy, can't complain. I love this, just being offered food. The best? The best? Yeah. The best, it's a big claim. Yeah. The best in Trang or the best in Thailand? Uh, the best in Trang. The best in Trang? <laughs> I'll be the judge of that. Future in Thailand. Okay. Coming soon. Yeah, 
Mm. That's nuts. Peanuts. Peanuts. Very good. May well be the best cookie in Tran. I'm not, not gonna. Den <laughs> I'm not gonna contest with her because it is damn good. Mm. Oh, and I forgot my tea. So let me try some some tea. Let me try that. Looks nice. Mm. Ah, light and fragrant. Chinese. What what flavor? Flower. It's a flower. You can taste the floral notes. You taste the fragrance. And actually, the last few herbal teas I've tried have actually had flavor. I said in England, herbal tea rarely has flavor and it just tastes of nothing, which is why I have this bad view of it. But here, when the quality is good and the quality is right, it is tasty. I still prefer coffee though. Uh, this is uh, a wall of Thai superstar, famous people in Thailand. So what do you think guys? Do you think I should get on the wall? A photo of me, me and you. And, then, and we can, uh... no? What? So she heard the public outcry and we're gonna take a photo together and it might, might, might get on the board. Guess I'll have to come back at some point to Trang to find out. Or you guys, when you guys come here, let me know. Let me know if you see my photo. <laughs> bye bye, Cab. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Top Kun Cab. Now, this is the problem with good hospitality. You go in and buy one box, you come out <laughs> with a mixed box with five different flavors roast pork curry puffs, and chicken curry puffs. So, yeah, well, when they're good and they're friendly. I'm only gonna be here once, right? I've just stopped off at a little park next to the Dugong Roundabout because apparently the first rubber tree in Thailand is planted here. and. That first rubber tree planted a few hundred years ago. I know, it's trying to tell the story for me. That first rubber tree planted a few hundred years ago kicked off a huge industry and now Thailand is the second largest producer in the whole world after Indonesia. And I thought it'd be interesting to stop off and see, just a quick look, because we did see a rubber plantation in Nan in that video. But yeah, I can't find it. <laughs> All of the trees are named, but I can't find the damn rubber tree. So if you are in the area and you want to see that little piece of history, hopefully you have better luck than me. I've come to the center point market in the center of Trang. I'll leave a link to it in the description. It's early, it's only open about half an hour ago, but that means all of the food will be there because a bit later on, sometimes they sell out or the good stuff sells out. But there's one benefit. Secondly, the light, it will just be better. Better to film now anyway. But it's always worth checking out the local night market or local street market when you arrive in a town. There's always one somewhere, and sometimes even more than one, especially in the bigger cities. If you're in Trang on a Friday, I know there's a separate walking street or a separate night market, but it's a Thursday today, so this is the one we've got, the Center Point Market. Actually, maybe we're even a little too early. People are still setting up and starting to cook, which is a good thing, because I like to see that. The other good thing is, you can see that it's all being prepared fresh in the market. Let's see what we want. So Sawadee cab. No one is camera shy here, only me. And here we go. The first of what I presume is many, cow gang. I have not seen snail curry in Thailand before. Now we're getting closer to Hat Yai, which is famous for the fried chicken, but you get this all over Thailand. This. It smells good, but I think I'll save the fried chicken for Hat Yard because we're not too far away now. Just two provinces away. These are a little mackerel and they make a delicious salad. I don't know if she's making the salad. I can't see, but <laughs> you can recognize them by the way their head is crooked as they're cooked. Very, very tasty. Salty and fishy, if that's what you like. We're going to get some and I'm gonna try it for the first time on camera with you because you only live once, right? And it's 40 baht and it looks interesting. Let's go for it. Okay, I've got it. But the curse of Joe has struck. It's raining. Right, I'm gonna go for cow gang because there's sheltered seating and there's something to choose from, but I'm going for this one. And like there's so many cow gang stalls, there are so many options to choose from with the cow gang. So, well, for me, unfortunately, I'm not like Gary. I don't really know what I'm looking at. So it's gonna be a case of Point and see, 
oh, this one looks amazing. It's like, I mean, it's not good for my waistline and we've had crispy pork, but it's like crispy pork skin curry. Can you get any better than that? This one looks interesting with sator or stink beans. And then you've got the yellow curries, which are packed with turmeric, I'm sure. So you get a plate of rice and then you get to choose your toppings and you pay for how many you get. Can I have one of this? What is it called? I need a right cap. Moon Sapa Nam Petri. Ah, good, yeah, it's good. Um, Mu. Mu Bien. Ah, this will be okay, this will be okay. Well, she was getting a little fed up for waiting for me because I was trying to choose. I was trying to ask her which, which is tasty, which, which should I go with, but uh, we've just got two toppings. I was trying to go for three. It doesn't matter. I'm too indecisive. That's my problem, not hers. I've got my little setup. It's not perfect. I'm on a tiny little table in the middle of the market, sheltered from the rain, and it's got damn humid, so it's a little bit sweaty too. <laughs> As I say, they turn nice now. Now I've started speaking to them. They weren't not nice, but they're busy. They don't want to be messing around with the farang who can't decide what he's choosing. But I've got two curries. One is pork with sator, and the other one is a yellow curry with pork, but it's the belly pork sliced up thinly. And th this comes with lucrienne, which is very similar to sator, very similar flavor and texture, but slightly different, slightly different flavor. Mmm, spicy, salty, rich, slight sweetness, and then you get that crunch, bitterness coming through from the sator, they're like, sulfury flavor. It's very difficult to describe the flavor of sator. It's good. I'm gonna add a little bit of this homemade chili sauce. Looks amazing. Looks very fresh actually. It doesn't look like they've roasted the chilies. Mm. Oh wow. That homemade chili sauce is incredible. The flavor, freshness, heat, yes. But freshness, fresh chili flavors. That might be one of my favorite Khao Gang plates. Well, that half of it so far. <laughs> Next up, the yellow curry with the strips of fatty pork and those lucrienne. And <clears throat> they're pretty cool. They've sprouted. And whenever I've seen them, they've sprouted. So they look interesting, very healthy, of course. Let's give that a try. Again, very delicious. Nice crunch from the lucrienne. Has a different flavor, subtle flavor, sweetness. Nice texture, and you have that soft pork. You can taste the fat in it. The fat is releasing all of the flavor. It's more spicy than the other, and it's more fragrant. It's nice to actually, when you have Khao Geng, it's nice to have a balance between two different curries, and you get a difference of flavor in your mouth. I like that. And then on the side here, you have cucumber that you can pop into your mouth. Mm. I think here, if I overheard her correctly, a plate with one portion is 30 baht and with two is 40 baht. So 40 baht for a big plate of rice and two different curries on top. It's an absolute bargain. You know food is good because even when I'm absolutely stuffed, I still finish the plate. I had to leave <laughs> the place where I was eating because everyone just started playing copyright Thai music. So that would definitely have flagged on YouTube. So I've had to come away Oh, and it started again. It's blasting out from speakers. Hopefully you can't hear it too loud or YouTube can't hear it too loud because that would be annoying. I'm so fascinated to try these sea grapes or as they're called in Thai, Sarai Puangangung, I think, something like that. Anyway, they've given it to me with Namjim seafood, which will hopefully, if they're bad, <laughs> make it taste a bit better, but give it a quick dip and then let's get them in the gob. Mmm, wow. Fresh, salty, tastes like the sea. Each little individual grape bursts with flavor. Slight crunch to them, they're fresh, they're raw, but the Namjim seafood is very good. Very, uh, very spicy, very zesty with the lime. Lots of green chili and lots of lime juice in there, obviously. Very tasty and 40 baht. And might I say, the Khao Geng, I said, was 40 baht for two curries, 35 baht. What an utter bargain. Anyway, guys, 
The rain has turned into a thunderstorm. I was gonna get dessert, but I think we're being rained out, especially with this Thai music blaring. We've eaten so much food today. I think you'll forgive me if we don't get dessert. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.